So here is our Stargate. So should we find out how it works? First thing you need to do is you need to actually dial address and this is done using something called a DHD, which I'm really happy how this pixel art turned out because I'm normally rubbish at pixel art. But if we press E, we get our way to dial the DHD. Now in Stargate, they use a lot of Egyptian symbols. I've just created some random ones minus the classic home symbol, um, just because it was much quicker. And in this case, there are 16 possible symbols that we can use, and these can make addresses. So first of all, if we just click on any of these, we're able to start creating an address. There's seven digits in the address. You can't click on the same one again. They've got to be different digits. And once we've dialed seven different options, the button will light up and we can dial. Now in this case, an invalid address. I haven't got a Stargate that links that address. What I have done though is wrote down the locations of the three that we've got. Now these are just handwritten by me with the symbols, but you could quite easily use the array where these addresses are stored to actually just generate this page. This would be really good for the sort of RPG sort of Stargate game where you can actually collect addresses as you go through. You can go back to places, be really, really cool. So let's dial the snow planet, which is just the gate next door to me in this example, but normally this would be somewhere else on the map. So I'm gonna go through the different symbols. And again, I'm just doing this by eye, just sort of typing them in as I see them on the side. I'm quite good at this as well, because I've typed this address a few times during testing. And once we're ready, we can hit the run button. Now when we run this, it's gonna go through these symbols one at a time for each of the seven chevrons, which is the little tiny triangles around the edge. And it's going to dial both gates. So it's going to dial the gate we're currently at and the snow gate. It will not dial the third gate on there because we're not going to that one. So let's see it in action. So you'll see the symbols go around. Once it hits the triangle, it will rotate back the other way until it hits the next one. And they're going round in order one at a time. You can see more clearly on the snow gate if I stand over here. And once the last one goes in, we should get a portal. And there we go. We have successfully dialed and the portal is now active. So we can now walk up the stairs, go through, and we come back out in the new Stargate location. Now I said there's a third Stargate, there's one more over here as well. And I just want to show you if I go onto this one. And first of all, let's actually try and dial the gate that we're currently at. So we're at the desert gate. So if I type this one in, and this one's a bit easy to remember because I've tried to make this a series of words. This is game and then kip, as in you're having a sleep while gaming. Uh, it's very difficult to come up with words for seven letters using these letters only and not any repeats. But if I dial it, you see I cannot dial this gate from this gate. So if I now dial the grasslands, so this one's nice and simple because it's just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So I've tried to make these gates fairly easy to remember where possible. But again, you can make it so if you're in a high pressure situation where you're getting shot, you've got to dial this or relive those memories from the TV show. But this one will start dialing and then on the flip side, we should see no gate dialing on the snow side, but the gate definitely dialing on the grassland. This gate's just a really, really cool effect between the two gates spinning. And it's actually dialing the symbols we selected. So it's going through the symbols in that order. And then when we get close enough, it will send us through. Hitbox a little bit big on that, but I'm quite happy. So if you want to try this code out for yourself, it's in the description. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a deep dive into the code. So if you're interested, stick around. So starting off, we'll look at these red boxes. These red boxes go over all the components of the Stargate and they're just numbered. So this is Stargate zero, this is Stargate one, the other one is Stargate two. And in the event sheet at the bottom, we've got the different locations and they're made of two different array values. The first one being the address. So the grassland is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And the second value being what Stargate number it is basically just saying which box it looking at, it wants to dial the gate that's inside that box. Now in terms of putting the addresses in, when you walk up to the DHD and you press E on it, you get this screen that appears. So this is set to a parallax layer. And you'll notice that every symbol I've put a corresponding letter to. This is just a really easy way to actually store this information because these aren't real symbols. So I can't put them into a string or a variable to store them. So I've had to do a bit of a code, but I've left these letters in for now so you can sort of see how it all works. And again, all I'm doing then is every time you click on these symbols, each of these symbols have an instance variable that just has a value. And then we're just appending that value to a variable and it's gonna match it up to see if it's a valid address or not. So that's how that side works. 
And again, we're just checking if that code equals seven, let you press the button. Let's move to the more exciting bit on actually getting this Stargate to turn the way it has. So first of all, the Stargate is covered in symbols and these are pinned onto the middle wheel. Each one of these also have the instant variables with the matching values. Now, when the gate spins, it's going to be checking the first letter of what you've dialed, if it's a valid address, which again, we check using that array. So let's say your first symbol was this one here, B. So you've typed that in, it's gonna wait until that B spins all the way around and gets this top one. And then it will look at the next letter, let's say F, which is this one here. And the gate will spin around the other way until that letter meets the second chevron. And I'm just tracking the chevrons just one at a time with a simple variable. So let's have a quick look at the code for that. It looks a little bit confusing, don't worry. It is, it's a tad confusing, but it's not too bad. So we've got a function for dialing the gate. This just means we're able to dial two gates at the same time, but I'm to double the code. And we're using the gate number. So when you use this function, you say which gate you want to dial. And I'm using a variable for ascending gate and a receiving gate. So whichever gate you're dialing from, and that's just checking if the player is overlapping that red box, you must be dialing from that one. And then the receiving gate we get from the array. We next check what chevron number you're on. You should be between zero and eight. After eight, we need to stop spinning it because you've established a portal. If it's below zero, you haven't started yet. And all we're gonna do is start rotating it. And we set the rotation speed every single time because every time that you match a symbol, we spin the gate the opposite direction, which gives a really, really cool effect. I'm using these overlapping just to make sure I'm selecting the right ring, chevron, symbols, and portal, and not doing a portal on the opposite side of the map. And then again, all we're doing is just checking if the symbols are overlapping the chevron and if those symbols, their code that they've got, say the letter A, matches the bit we're currently on in the dialing sequence. Once it's all finished, we spawn a particle effect, which I can show you, it's just up here, hidden out of the way. And this is just adding the water effect, which gives a really, really good look to it. And then just a particle with a lot of properties messed about with to sort of give this effect, which looks really, really good. But I think that's mainly it. I think the final thing that we've got on here is just the reset function, which is just a bit further down. And this just resets everything. So if you type in the wrong number or you go through a gate and you can't the other side, it'll reset everything as well. So if you want to use this code for yourself, how do you add a brand new Stargate? Well, first thing you need to drag everything in this red box copy and paste it and click it somewhere else, making sure these red boxes do not overlap, which again, these are traveling from planet to planet, and they shouldn't be next to each other. That's not the point of the Stargate. Next, you just need to click on the red box and change the Stargate number. Now I've already got Stargate 0, 1, and 2, so this would be Stargate number three. Finally, we just go down to our addresses. I'm just gonna copy the last two lines of code we then write in the new combination, making sure there's no repeats. So for instance, we could do A, B, C, D, E, F, H, because I've already got one with G. That's a new combination. I need to set this to the Stargate number being three. And on this side, again, the Y needs to be set to Stargate number and the value also to the Stargate number. And that is it. We now have a brand new address. We can now dial the brand new gate that we've added and we can carry on building out this map. If you've enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.